Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back to another ramen taste test. Today, I'm going to be tasting the most expensive instant ramen I have ever purchased, and it is this one. Ichiran Ramen. I picked this up when I was in Japan a couple months ago. I ate at Ichiran Ramen. It was an amazing experience. I will put the link up above and down below in case you missed it. If you have your own window where the server will bring you your bowl of ramen and you consume it in your own kind of peaceful solitude of your own booth. A very interesting and delicious experience. So before I went home, I made sure to pick up one of these, and this is a box of instant Ichiran ramen. This cost about 20 US dollars, and this is the premium seto. So I was very curious to see if this contained chashu, and if it didn't, I knew I had to do some preparation work. So I went ahead and opened this, and let me show you what's inside. There we go. So it gives you very specific instructions on how to make the ramen noodles. You heat up 450 milliliters of water and you cook the noodles in it and that actually becomes the broth. You don't strain the noodles, you don't rinse them, which is kind of unusual for typical ramen noodles. Usually they shake off the excess water, but that's also usually with fresh noodles. These are dried. This only contains three items. Their noodles, their ichiran proprietary soup base, and their chili powder. So there's five packs of noodles and five soup bases. So for $20, each one of these would be about $4, which is actually very reasonable. I thought for one instant ramen noodle, it was gonna be $20, but it isn't. So it's a bit misleading in that sense, but that's also my fault because if I read this carefully, it says five servings here. So since this ramen set does not contain some of my most favorite parts of ramen besides the noodles, the pork belly and the egg, I went ahead and made them. So let me show you how I made my chashu and how I made my shoyu tamago or my soy sauce eggs. I'm also going to show you how to prepare woodier mushrooms. So Japanese chashu is basically pork belly that has been rolled and then braised for a long time at a low temperature to get it nice and tender. And then it's thinly sliced and served in ramen noodles. So the recipe I chose comes from a blog called Ice or Rice and it's for Instapot chashu. It's still takes about 90 minutes to cook, so pretty equivalent to a stovetop version, which may take up to two and a half to three hours, depending on how big your pork roll is. But with an Instapot, you don't really have to keep an eye on it. It's just doing its thing, and then when it's done, it's just done. So I like that aspect. I can do other things once it gets going. So this is what I did. So I went to the Asian market and got some pork belly and made sure to get the kind that has the skin on it. You want a longer piece because you want to be able to roll it. If it's too short, you won't get a nice good roll. You can take your pork belly with the skin side out, roll it nice and tight, and then take some kitchen twine and tie it very, very securely. So next we're gonna blanch this for about 10 minutes in boiling water. This is supposed to leach out any porky smells. So while the pork belly is blanching, we can prepare the Instapot. In the bowl of the Instapot, we're gonna add two long green onions, you can also substitute scallions or leeks. Then you're gonna add four slices of ginger, four cloves of garlic that have been crushed, a half cup of cooking sake, one cup of water, a half cup of soy sauce, and a half cup of mirin, which is a seasoned sake, it's a little bit sweet. So once we dump all those ingredients in, we're gonna place our blanched pork belly right on top. We're gonna seal this up and then cook it on high pressure for 90 minutes. The blog post says that if the sauce does not submerge the pork belly to stop it midway and turn it over, I didn't bother to do this. I knew that it would take a lot of time for it to get back up to temperature. I'd have to wait for it to cool down. So I just let it go for 90 minutes and it was fine. So we're gonna do a natural release and allow the Instapot to cool on its own before opening. Next, the recipe calls for pan frying the pork roll. Mine was completely covered in twine and very, very delicate. So I decided to skip this step and then place the pork belly into a deep container and cover it with the sauce. And then we're gonna place this in the refrigerator to allow it to steep in the marinade overnight and cool so then we can slice it for our ramen. Because I have this beautiful marinade, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to make soy sauce tamago. So that's the egg that comes with the ramen noodles. So this is really easy. You just bring some water up to the boil. If your eggs just came out of the refrigerator, you might wanna place them in a little bit of warm water before you place them into the boiling water and that helps them from immediately cracking. So then once the water comes up to the boil, you're gonna gently place your eggs into the water and then allow this to boil for seven minutes. So I was doing this while I was making dinner, so mine went about eight minutes, but seven minutes or six minutes is really better. So mine are gonna be a little bit more cooked than I want them to be, but 
you know. So after the eggs have cooled a bit, we're gonna crack them and peel them and then place them into our beautiful marinade along with our pork roll and place them all in the refrigerator and allow them to marinate overnight. So this is where I am now. Let's have some lunch already, okay? So in a saucepan, I'm gonna add 450 milliliters of water. It's about two cups. So while that's coming up to a boil, I'm going to slice my chashu. Look at that. So this is another good reason to allow this to sit overnight. It's because all this fat floats to the top and it solidifies once it's cooled. So we can remove all of that very easily. I should mention that I added about a tablespoon of dark soy sauce to this before I added my eggs because I wanted my eggs to have a nice brown color, but you certainly don't need to do that. And here are my eggs. So I'm gonna cut all this twine off. We don't want anyone biting into string by accident. Oh yes, that looks beautiful. It looks like a porchetta, which is of course the Italian version of a pork belly roll. Oh yes, this is gonna be delicious. Okay, I can hear my water coming up to the boil. We're gonna drop our noodles in there, cook it for two and a half minutes. So while that's going, let me tell you about the woodier mushrooms. Now, I went to the Asian market, I got two types of mushrooms. One is called black fungus mushroom. It looks a lot like woodier and it's already pre-cut. So I got that. And then I also picked up woodier mushroom, which is a fungus that grows on trunks. And to prepare this, it's super easy. You just take a little bit of the dried fungus and then you just cover it with boiling water and it expands incredibly. So a little actually goes a long way. After I rehydrated the black fungus, I think this is actually what I had at Ichiran. Much longer pieces rather than the smaller woodier. They both have a very similar texture, kind of cartilaginous, slightly crunchy, not a whole lot of flavor. It's mostly for texture. 15 more seconds. Okay. Now we're going to take our soup base, add that directly into the pot. Ooh, look at that. That looks so rich. That's smelling pretty amazing. So oftentimes what they do in the ramen shop is they pick it up and they kind of lay it down so you have a nice pile in the middle. Chili powder. I'm gonna put that right in the middle. I'm gonna put all of it. Add my egg. Black fungus in the corner. I'm so pleased with how the chashu turned out. Right there, I'm gonna add two slices because I am hungry. Chashu, lots of green onion. Oh man, that looks beautiful. <sighs> I'm so excited to eat this. This looks beautiful, absolutely beautiful. All right, I'm gonna mix this into here. All right, here we go. Itadakimasu. Mm. Oh, that pork chash, it was so good. It's so tender and porky and melt away. It has a great delicious flavor because it marinated in that sauce. Mmm. And because we cut it so thinly, when you put it in the soup, it just warms right up, right out of the refrigerator. Oh, this is the best instant ramen noodles I've ever had. Oh, I forgot my nori. Oh my gosh. Granted, when I usually have instant noodles, I don't have chashu lying around. I don't have a soy sauce tamago lying around, so. That does make a big difference. Speaking of which, let's have some egg. Mmm. That egg is actually very good. And actually quite similar to the one that I had at Ichiran. Kind of creamy like that. Not as kind of onsen and more almost hard boiled. Delicious. Mm hmm. The broth is nice and spicy. I definitely recommend putting the whole pack in. And because we use the water that was boiled in the pasta water, it has a nice consistency, kind of a thicker soup. The noodles are delicious. Two and a half minutes, perfect time. Is it as good as the original? Not quite, but I'll take it. 
And I definitely recommend the black fungus or the woodier mushrooms as well. They add a really great crunchy texture component to this noodle soup. It's just really delightful, playful. There's not a whole lot of flavor. It's just all about texture. And along with the noodles, so, so good. I would say this is an absolutely delicious instant ramen noodle, especially if you have all the side dishes. If you don't have all the side dishes with it, then it's certainly not as fun. You could definitely do the egg on a whim and you have to have the green onions. Pork, of course, you'd have to do some planning. But I imagine if you make a bit of this, you could probably slice this up and have them frozen and then take them out. I think that would be a quick workaround. But yeah, this is delicious. I would say this is as good as the fresh style instant noodles that you can get in the refrigerator case at the Asian market. I would say this is right up there with those in terms of just quality of soup base and quality of noodles. Oops, delish. For those of you that are appalled of my slurping, that's totally typical in Japan. Slurping actually is a way to cool off your noodles and it's a compliment to the chef that you're really enjoying your noodles. So if you go to Japan and you hear a lot of people slurping their ramen noodles, don't think they're being rude. That's just what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Alrighty, so there you have it. Ichiran instant noodles, absolutely worth the money, especially if you make your little side dishes, especially. If you don't make the side dishes, it's not gonna be nearly as good and it's not gonna be as similar to the original experience. You could actually add these side dishes to any kind of instant ramen noodle and it would just take it to next level. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Please check out the Ramen 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 playlist where I taste all different kinds of instant noodles. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, subscribe, like this video, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. I think I have ramen noodle down my shirt. <laughs>